Alrighty, so before we get started, um, we have our first watch party that happened, yes? So, uh, Katie, AJ, and Anthony, uh, any reactions from the film, from the video? A lot of history. A lot of history. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, what? Uh, what kind of what was uh, good? Something that jumped out at you, Katie, that you found interesting that you didn't know before. Um, I didn't know that, like, the, so like when they have moat, uh -huh. they like had like builder own moat, and yeah. like they like had like different kind of like yeah. Okay. Yeah, the the mo the whole modular concept of building your own synthesizer rather than it being this off the shelf device that's already pre configured, right? Anthony, what what jumped out at you? There was such a controversy when it came to when they added the keyboard. Yeah. Because some people were like, but now it's, you're just going to play regular music. You know, it's going to just become ordinary music where or it's going to be more abstract. It's just the way it was. Yeah, that idea of adding a keyboard to a synthesizer was uh, was not without controversy. And yet now, I mean, post 1980s, really. Everyone thinks of synthesizer and keyboard as being synonyms with each other, right? Um, but they're not, because you can have a synthesizer without a keyboard, okay? Um, cool. Well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll look forward to hearing. Again, my offer still stands uh, for people that if you want to organize a watch party and watch this, I mean, was it worth, worth your time to learn a little bit of history in this video format? Anthony's shaking his head yes. Ka Katie? What? Worth the time to watch it and learn a little bit? You guess? Okay. <laughs> Worth the three points in terms yeah. of... Okay, there you go. People are okay. So people... Uh, uh, my offer still stands there. So um, let me see here. So Monday review... Uh, we're going to be building off of some of the things that we did on Monday. And this is really the first week where I've kind of, I'm going to be doing this kind of comparative approach where we're looking at the same techniques in different environments, okay? Um, and so we talked about different um, musical genres. Who remembers that on, on Monday? What was the name of the chapter, Christian? Ambient. Ambient, right? But not to be confused with some other musical terms that we brought up on, on Monday, which were? Minimalism. Minimalism generative. and generative, okay? Um, I would argue that we, and I, I didn't um, really, I, I think in looking at the, the tape, which is not a tape because it's digital, right? But in looking at the recording from class, uh, I think I kind of glossed over the fact that the, the rat patch, the example that's in the chapter, is probably not... It's definitely gener generative, yes? Probably not the best patch for producing ambient, yes? Okay, so that's maybe my one critique of the chapter. Um, and I've met VJ, and if I ever see him again, I'll, I'll tell him that. Uh, uh, tell him uh, that little bit of feedback, basically. But um, definitely it's a generative patch, okay? And hopefully we'll be doing some things with generative elements in Max today, okay? Um, but if the goal is ambient, which uh, if you've uh, read in detail the first project, right, the first project for this class is to create either an ambient or a rock or a, what's the other one? There's one other style and I'm forgetting it right now, but ambient is one of the styles that's permissible for the first project. I'm flipping to my syllabus. This is why I write things down so I don't have to remember them. Hip hop, okay, is the other genre that you can do for project one, okay, and there's a chapter on hip hop that we'll get to, okay. Um, let's see then, and I, the other, I, I talked about this big topic of modulation synthesis, right, and uh, when I had the three tracks, actually I had four tracks, right, the first one were parallel oscillators, but there were three tracks that followed up on that that had three different types of, of modulation synthesis. Anybody remember what those were? Frequency was one of them. Amplitude was the other. And the ring modulation, okay? Uh, hopefully we're going to see in a little bit uh, more concretely, and, and literally I mean see, because we're going to use some of those, remember those uh, objects in Max that we used that had uh, for visualizing sound? Okay, we're going to be using uh, the spectroscope today to kind of visualize what the difference is in, in these different um, th three different types of, of modulation synthesis, okay? So ring, amplitude, and frequency modulation, okay? Um, reading responses, I honestly, uh, I got 
pounced on with some departmental business this morning, so I haven't had a chance to look at your reading responses. Were there, were there, were there any big, I don't know, this was the first, I think, format where I sent you links to the tutorials from MSP, correct? Okay. How was that in terms of reading? No? no. Not helpful. Okay. Not helpful. Okay. Okay, I'll have to look and see if that's the majority. Of, well, should I do that right now? This is live data of things I have not previewed. I have to go to Firefox. Okay, so I'm flying without a net here. Drive. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, this is last night. Yeah, this is yesterday's. Or excuse me, not yesterday's, Monday's. So this was reading report seven. Let's see what the majority says. Oh, so we're tilting toward the not helpful. Okay, five was supposed to be very helpful. So we've got equal number of very helpful and not helpful. Nobody says very not helpful, I guess you'd say, for, for one. Okay, but we, we are kind of trending in that direction a little bit. Okay. Um, in terms of time that people are spending, 20 to 40 minutes is where the bulk of you are uh, spending. So, uh, Catherine, you had a pretty strong response. What, what did you find not helpful? Just the fact that it's talking about a patch that you don't have in front of you? Basically, okay. like information. Ah, okay. And I don't know what to do with that information. Okay, okay. So maybe, that's, so maybe some of that is on me in terms of not setting up what these are. Okay. Anybody else have that reaction or... Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult to follow along with these without having Macs in front of us. Yeah. At, at least for me, because mm -hmm. I'm more of a visual type of person. It helps to physically see those things done. Okay, so to point out where these are, these actually do exist inside the Macs environment. And maybe I didn't do a good job of uh, telling you guys where, where those are. So rather than blame the people producing the, the tutorials, if you go under, uh, let's see, is it help? Reference. So I'm inside of Max right now. This is the Max tutor, uh, online documentation. So if you go here to documentation home, the links that I sent you, so this exists on the web so that you can, the, the reason it exists on the web is so that you can get to it when you don't have your copy of Max in front of you. So that's a, that's a good thing to have access to it, that, that the embedded help is not uh, only exclusively accessible when you have Max in front of you, but the, in terms of learning from these tutorials and actually walking and walking through and following along, it's probably helpful to do it here inside the documentation home. Uh, the ones that I linked to are here under MSP, and MSP is kind of the the audio portion of Max. Okay, uh, there's different stories as far as what MSP stands for. MSP. Some people say it's Max Signal Processing. Other people say it's uh, it's actually the acronym of uh, the, the initials of Miller S. Puckett, who Miller S. Puckett was the original designer of Max. Uh, MSP is also the airport code of Minneapolis, which is where David Ziccarelli was born. So there's, uh, there's different legends and stories as far as what MSP stands for. And actually, Cycling 74 is moving away from calling it, it used to be, you, you'll find some earlier writings that call it Max MSP, right? Uh, and in fact, I think our book talks about it as being Max slash MSP slash Jitter, okay? Max is kind of the core message routing system. MSP is where all the audio stuff gets added in. Jitter is where all the video stuff gets added in, okay? So if you've taken the art and interactivity class, you've probably done some work with Jitter as well, okay? Um, we're going to be focusing mainly on the MSP portion, but where you find these, which is why, originally why I opened this up, sorry I, I digress, if you click on tutorials here, I think the ones I, 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 I linked you to were these right here, okay? And, Additive and modulation synthesis. So if I go to AM synthesis, okay, this is what this look familiar like what you read? Yes, okay. And when you do it inside the Max environment on the computer with that's running Max, there's this button right here that says Open Tutorial. It will literally open the patch for you that is being talked about. Okay, makes sense. So I I. I erred on the side of making it accessible outside this lab, realizing that this lab has crazy hours and it's hard to get in here outside of class, right? Uh, but the ideal scenario whenever I link to these MSP tutorials is that you're sitting at a computer running Max, actually reading it and following along inside the patch. Make sense? Okay. I'm sorry I, if I glossed over that and didn't 
set that up properly. So that might have resolved Catherine's complaint about wondering what, what the heck is going on. What are they talking about? They're talking about this patch. Okay? So I apologize for that. My bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think the other one key question I want to put together is why are we spending so much time talking about modulation synthesis? Did that come across in the reading at all or the reading from, let's see, the reading from Monday didn't really deal with modulation synthesis. Has anybody looked ahead to the reading from for Friday because it also deals with modulation synthesis? No? Okay. Um, this is maybe a question that um, I want you to have in the back of your mind, like, why are we doing these different configurations of oscillators in order to create these weird spectra of sound, okay? Um, so I don't want to answer this right now, but I want you to have this in the back of your brain as we're looking at these examples and hearing these examples um, to actually kind of answer this question for ourselves. So today we're going to be doing some stuff in Cycling 74 Max. Uh, if you haven't already, the patch starting point is on Blackboard in the classroom examples. It should be the first example. So similar process to before, once you log on to Blackboard, okay, uh, you should be able to, let's see, in Blackboard, let's get uh, our watch party here off, okay, uh, class examples, yes, 14th September start of class, you should be able to, uh, right, you guys remember the process for getting this from Blackboard into Max? The correct answer would be yes, but no is okay. Okay, if you're if you're at all stuck, let me know. Yeah, Hunter. You copy and then you just paste from clipboard. Yes, paste from clip or new from clipboard. I think yeah. is the is the menu. Okay, so right in here, new from clipboard. Okay, that's the option you want, and it should give you this patch that looks something like this. Okay, so we're going to. Uh, I've got. I've got one new object in here that I want to introduce just because I thought it'd be fun to start looking at other input devices besides uh, MIDI keyboards. Ooh, and that reminds me. I do want to use the microphones today, so let's take a minute to pass those out. So I'll slide one box over here. Let's see there again. Oh, Matt and Christian. I'm to start passing out of those so people want to come forward. Same thing over here. We do want these attached to the computers. And actually, I'm going to need one. Yeah. My Max originally was started, but now it's done. Okay. Can you still do the flip one? Okay. Um, and because I just remembered this after telling you to open up Max, you may need to restart Max before we start using these microphones. Um, but because sometimes when you're dealing with audio, when you're dealing with audio software, and in that audio software you add devices, it often needs you to restart the software in order to make it work. Uh, so what's the first thing we should do opening up a new patch, a new example in class? Put well, put your headphones, okay. <laughs> you can do that, yeah. But what about save as, right? I talked about that last time. That that should be your kind of uh, mode of operation here with um, any of the environments we're looking at, any of the software environments we're looking at. I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to call this 914 NW changes. Okay, so that's my in-class changes there. Uh, and let me look real quick. I just created this. Uh, well, no, I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're not gonna look at the microphones just yet. But I wanted to get them passed out and and in your in your laps there. Um, okay, so let's start off where we started off on Monday with parallel oscillators. Okay, you'll see I have two oscillators inside the patch. Yes, one, two. And I've got sliders connected to them. So if you lock this and move the slider, what you're doing with these sliders is actually changing the frequency. Okay, these are live dot sliders. If you need the information about how they're set up, when you unlock the patch, highlight it, and you click on the I, that's where you get information about these sliders. And the nice thing about the live sliders, a you you can actually give them a name so that they're addressable. I'll zoom in over here. Okay. 
Uh, we're not going to be doing too much with that today, except the fact that uh, this short name is actually what shows up at the top of the page. So right, if you, I'm, I'm in the, I highlighted the frequency slider, uh, and then I clicked on the I to open the inspector, and in the inspector, there's a short name. If I double click that and I change that to frequency one, two, three, four, five. Okay, hit return and then zoom back out. You'll see that my name is now frequency one, two, three, four, five. Well, it's a little, I'll have to actually widen this. Okay, so you can actually change the name that's displayed there. That's handy for when you're building Max for Live patches and you want to use them as plugins to actually have them labeled with what they control. Yes, okay. Uh, the other thing that's available to you in the inspector that I want to point out is the range. So you can actually set the range. I've constricted these for the time being between zero and uh, 1,270, okay, I basically, they default when you create a new one to a 127. Why 0 to 127? Where have we seen that before? Yeah, 128 in what? What's the standard uh, communication protocol that we've talked about that has this 0 to 127 limitation built into it, baked into it? MIDI, MIDI yes, okay, MIDI, okay. So I, 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 I lazily just added a 0 to make the range wider, okay? Uh, and then the last thing I want to point out is there's this unit style, okay? Um, which is different than Gangnam style, right? Okay, you've got your unit style here. Uh, I've set it to Hertz because we're controlling Hertz, so why not have it display the fact that we're in the unit of Hertz, okay? Okay, but you've got other items here that are handy, okay? Uh, I just wanted to point those few things out. Okay, so we're gonna create, we're gonna take two parallel oscillators here, okay? Um, and so we want to hear these. Let's go ahead and unlock the patch. Let me get this off the side. I'm going to connect and connect. And so I should now have two oscillators connected to my output. I'm using a particular object here that, I don't know, you should recognize this symbol, right, before the tilde. What is that symbol? It's a plus, yes. Okay. What do we? What mathematical operation do we use for when we have a plus symbol? Okay. No. <laughs> Addition, right? Okay. Um, the thing I want to point out here is that when we are mixing signals in Max, when we are mixing signals in Max, you think about your mixer and, cr and creating combinations of tracks. The the mathematical operation we use is addition. Okay, addition lets us actually mix two signals together. Okay, so you need to start to link some of these mathematical operations in your brain with uh, what audio processes they let you do. So addition is a form of uh, mixing two audio signals. Okay, uh, and so when I now lock the patch and turn this on, I get two oscillators, which I'll turn that down. Okay, and again, uh, watch out for your headphones. Turn them down, kids. Make sure you don't damage your hearing if once you turn this patch on. I've actually got one oscillator right now at 940. But if I then take my other slider and move it up. Is this at 990? Okay. So I've got two, two oscillators. Everybody hear how they're mixing? And I'll just, you can, you can when the patch is, is locked, actually click on this number and type something in. So let's do this. Type in 880 and then type in 440 in the second one. Okay. Why did I, why did I pick those two numbers? I didn't just pull them out of thin air. Yeah, they're the same. Uh, te technically, they are the same pitch class. Okay, they're both A's in Western music. Okay, the the letters are referred to as pitch classes, right? Am I saying that right, theory majors? Okay, so A, they're A's in different octaves. Okay, so when we have this integer multiple of two, when we're twice the frequency, we're at the same pitch class. Okay, in just in different octaves. Okay, so hear how lovely the harmony sounds with those two things. Okay, in a perfect balance ratio of one to two. Okay, if I now grab this slider and start to move up, I can find some other pleasing intervals here. 
But listen to what happens when I get close again. We hear that. Okay. Do you hear do you hear two frequencies anymore? Eh, it's kind of in the gray zone, okay? And as I get closer, you shouldn't hear two frequencies any anymore. You, now you hear one frequency that's being disturbed, okay? The rule here is that when you get within 10% of the hertz of each other, and it's, it is a percentage because it's different at 40 hertz than it is at 4,000 hertz. It's, it's about 10%, okay? Your inner ear can no longer resolve these two frequencies. It's, and I say literally, literally your inner ear. It's not your brain. It's your inner ear that can't resolve these two frequencies independent of each other. They're interfering with each other in your inner ear, and so you hear one kind of like warbly pitch. Make sense? Okay, this is where psychoacoustics comes into play, right? That, that word from last week that some of you highlighted wanting to know more about, okay? I knew psychoacoustics was going to come up. This is a psychoacoustic phenomenon, okay? Your inner ear can't resolve these two frequencies independent of each other, so you hear one pitch that's got this kind of warble to it, and as you get closer, the warble slows down. Okay, and I want to zoom in here. I've got two frequencies, 880 and 876, okay? That warble should now be at four hertz or four times per second, okay? So, if, I don't know, somebody clock me. Is that about four times a second? Okay, roughly, okay, okay? So, this is why math starts to matter, right? Okay, because you can predict the behavior of the, what's happening sonically based on the math, okay? It's always going to, when you get within that 10% range, it's always going to warble at the difference between the two frequencies when you've got two parallel oscillators. Make sense? Okay? So that, that's key information to know because if you know that, you can now predict the sound and you can actually be a better sound designer because you can actually know what's going to happen when you start to detune oscillators from each other. Okay? You can create this, uh, this known phenomenon of the, the beat frequency between the two. Okay? Now, I'll turn that down. Okay, so we're dealing with parallel oscillators that have been mixed, okay? And looking at my patch, the mix is now going to both speakers, right? Okay, and so I tried to make a distinction uh, last time in Ableton, and it was kind of fighting with me, panning one left and panning one right, okay? Remember, remember that struggle that I had on Monday? Okay, it's a little easier inside of Max, because what I do is I simply take this. I'm going to delete this second one here. I'm going to take this second oscillator and I'm just going to patch it right into the frequency now, okay? So I've got these two frequencies now, one going to the left speaker, and I, I, here, I'll make it even clearer for you, okay? Okay, I'll get this out of the way, okay? There's no sound going into this object, so there's no sound coming down this path here. But this oscillator is going to one speaker, this oscillator is going to the other speaker, okay? Everybody saw, I didn't change the frequency, right? Now listen to what happens when I... Oh, no? Yeah, yeah you, you're... Okay, if you're doing this on your headphones, you might not hear it. Because now, instead of the interference happening on each speaker, it's happening between your ears. It's happening in your brain. This is the whole binaural beats. There's like a whole subculture on the internet of people sending out these binaural beat things. But do you hear the difference in the air over speakers? Yeah, it's, it's probably, it's more pleasing, right? Okay, it's maybe less harsh. It's still beating. But it's happening in the air rather than on the speaker, okay? Um, this is something you can use, especially in kind of like uh, concerts or mixing, to have different uh, tunings for different speakers and let the interference happen in the air creates this kind of richer tone, if you will, okay? It's less harsh. Yeah, Hunter. I took out this, I, I moved this uh, addition object to the side and I just patched this, the frequencies right into the speaker. Okay. okay so. so literally 880 is going to my left channel, 
876 is going to my right channel. And when there's only one plug-in, it zooms left. Yeah, listen to what happens when I pan. When I pan to the other speaker. OK. But the easy DAC assumes it's a mono channel when you're only plugging the left side. The easy DAC is a stereo object. So the one on the left is your left channel, and the one on the right is your right channel, and it will go to those speakers. Right, when you only have one signal and nothing plugged into the right channel, and it's just one plug into the left channel, it just goes stereo. No, it just goes to the left. There's actually nothing going in the right channel right now. Gotcha. Okay. So if you don't send anything to the right channel, nothing goes to the right channel. Okay. okay. That's that's good information to have. So anyway. This is one of my favorite sound design effects, and it's dirt simple, basically, to send different tunings to different speakers and let this warble happen in the air. Um, people also tend to feel like the warble is happening closer to them rather than out on the speakers, basically. So it, it, it kind of it has this phenomenon of bringing the sound closer to you, if you would. Okay, I don't, That's one thing that people describe when they describe this. Okay. Make sense? Okay, see why I, I didn't want to gloss over. There is a difference between mixing it and then sending it to both speakers and sending different tunings to different speakers. Okay, you'll get different effects. Um, okay, so enough about parallel oscillators. Um, or, actually, let's do this. Since I, had, I, I, I didn't want to get too far beyond this uh, mouse state object, right? You may have noticed that these numbers are rapidly moving. Anybody see the, what's going on with these numbers? Yeah, they're the x and y coordinates on our on our on our um, screen here, right? Okay, and they get bigger down here. So my screen is one twenty eight by eight hundred. Okay, those are roughly in the range of uh, oscillators. Yes. So, hey, what I love about Max, if you can connect inlets to outlets, you can actually map these things very easily to each other. So try this out. Take one. Take the x, map it to one frequency. Take the y, map it to the other, and let the fun begin. And you could not, right now we're not even doing anything to map them onto another range. We're just simply accepting the range that's x and y, right? 0 to 128 and 0 to 800. Um, but we could actually do some math and change the 0 to 800 to be 100 to 200 or 1,000 to 2,000, basically. We can map those ranges onto each other. That's a pretty simple operation, okay? I don't want to get too sidetracked on that today because I want to stay focused on modulation synthesis, okay? The point I want to make here is that if, if there's an input device to your computer, chances are there's a max object for it, and chances are you can then turn that into a musical controller, okay? So even your humble mouse can become a musical controller for you, okay? By using this mouse state object, it needs a message called pull, P-O-L-L, -L, okay? And so what I've done here, I've used this uh, object called load mess, which basically sends a message when you load the patch. It's going to send the message P-O-L-L -L, to the mouse state object so that it starts uh, playing. And it even gets, uh, the toggle here you'll see gets the, the mouse pressed information. So you, I could, uh, let's do that real quick. I could take this toggle and now um, I'll create a new object called uh, multiply tilde. Okay. Multiply tilde in the signal domain is going to let you control the amplitude of something. Okay, so if I take this and now I'm going to go back to here, I'm going to mix these again, and then I'm going to take my on off switch and put it on the other side. And I should now be able to. 
You see what I did there? I'll put on the other speaker so I can hear it better. Oh, I, I clicked something else. Sorry. So now my my mouse button controls on and off. Okay, but it's effectively controlling the amplitude of my signal. Because if the amplitude's one, right, we hear it. If the amplitude's zero, we don't hear it. Fun? Fun with mice? I'm glad we handed out those mi mi mouse pads at the beginning of class, right? Okay. Uh, any questions about what I've done so far? Because we're right now, we're not even doing modulation synthesis. We're just doing two parallel oscillators, okay? So let's talk about modulation synthesis, and let's bring in the microphone, okay? Uh, I don't know. Do we want to leave the mouse button? Let's leave the mouse button there. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. To like just change? Let me look real quick. Okay. All righty. So let's use these microphones, shall we? Okay. So just to prove that it's actually, I'm going to disable this because otherwise I'm going to hear. I'm going to just delete mine real quick. If you want to leave yours connected, that's fine, but I don't want it blurping in the background, okay? I'm going to delete this second frequency here, so frequency 2 and the cycle object that's attached to it. I'm just going to highlight them and hit delete so that they go away, okay? I'm now going to change this operation here from an addition operation. I'm going to move, change it to a multiplication operation, okay? Uh, and this is where pro computer programming differs a little bit from your, your high school uh, math, right? Uh, if you've taken the intro to computing class, you know this, but asterisk is the symbol that's used for multiplication, okay? Uh, and when we multiply two signals, interesting things start to happen. This is where modulation starts to happen, by multiplying two signals together, okay? So we're going to leave this cycle object connected to the multiply object, and then we're going to create, we've been using the easy DAC, Okay, and DAC stands for what? Anybody remember? Digital to analog converter, right? Okay, so if we want to go the other way, if we, that's, that's to send digital information out to the analog world. What if we want to get analog inf world into the digital world? What do you think we use? Yeah, yeah, okay, so reverse the letters. If you create a new object and type in EZA DAC, okay, you're going to see a little microphone symbol appear, okay? This should get you information from your microphone. And if you want to prove, let's see, let's do this real quick and confirm that the microphones are working. If you create another scope object, and now, yeah, when I type on, see how I'm tapping on the microphone and my scope is reacting. That tells me that my microphone is working. Okay, so new object, scope tilde. I'm just, all I'm doing right now is visualizing the microphone information. Nothing, the microphone information is not coming back out, okay? But this is me talking into my microphone, getting a signal, testing it. Is that working for everybody? No. No, no, okay. I hate it when that happens. Okay, I'm on <laughs> one. Try, do, re, do me a favor real quick. Do a save as, close max, and then open the patch back up. You need to pop right in the Oh, you know what? It might be using. That's that's a good point. So, it, if if it's real tiny, it might be using the internal microphone, not the snowball microphone. 
Okay, so this is a good, uh, if you go up to options, the options menu, go to audio status, okay? Ah, look at that. I was fooling myself thinking that I was using the blue snowball when in fact I was using the built-in microphone, okay? Silly me. Okay, so zooming in here to the audio status, if you change this input device from built-in microphone to blue snowball, it might take a little sec a second there, and you might have to restart. Once you do that, you have to restart your patch. But now I'm talking in and I'm getting a really crazy big signal, right? Okay. Does that help for everybody? Again, options, audio status. And you want this input device right here to say blue snowball. Okay. Got it? Okay, so now that that's working, now that we're getting crazy good hot signals here, okay. Take, unlock your patch, and take the output from your microphone, your easy ADAC, and connect it to the cycle object. And you should start to see your voice now in the spectrogram. Da da da. There's my voice. And just to convince myself that that's actually my voice, uh, I'll, I will whistle so that we get something approximating a, an oscillator. Okay. Now, you are not getting just the raw signal. You're actually getting the signal multiplied by this oscillator. Okay. You are now ring modulating your voice. Or ring, uh, more, more particularly, you're ring modulating anything that comes in this microphone, okay? What happens when you ring modulate something uh, in uh, a microphone source? It actually takes the spectra and shifts it. It shifts it by whatever this number is here on your oscillator. So it actually takes the spectrum of your voice and shifts it over 500 hertz, in this case right now, or what is it, 507, okay? Whatever the number is on the oscillator, it's shifting it that amount, okay? So I, I'm gonna get your second, in a second here, uh, Hunter, let me get this, this uh, thought out here. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect my mouse on off switch so I can hear it. And so now when I click and drag, I should hear my voice. Uh, okay, I have to turn up, now where's my speaker? Turn this up. Everybody's doing the ah. Ah. Yes, Hunter, your question. Um, so is this kind of how it's box? Um, I have to, I have to look uh, some effort. I can't remember right off the top of my head. But yeah, ring modulation, you can get ring modulation guitar pedals, yes. Right. Uh, and they're not always called ring modulation because that's a little more geeky engineering sp speak, basically. Okay. Yeah, if you got the microphone and you're using the internal speakers, watch out for feedback. Yep. I did change the input uh, to the Snowball microphone and the waveform is still like less cool. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to kind of push past that because I, I've got two other forms of modulation synthesis to get to, okay? Awesome. So we're getting some, uh, even, even feedback, we are going to get some interesting noises because you're actually modulating the feedback by the oscillator, okay? So, yeah, so it's actually, it's pushing up the pitch of the feedback along the way, okay? Um, but if you're playing, if you're listening up here, uh, this might sound somewhat familiar in terms of, uh, there's, uh, <laughs> This is often a, a, an effect that's used from, uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, I always pick this out in terms of Star Wars when they've got uh, interference on the radio and the rebel base is calling in Rogue One, Rogue One, they got detention. What, they're use, what Ben Burt was using was ring modulation at that, that moment in the movie, okay? So if you listen to it, that's, what, that's what's happening, okay? So to connect it to your concrete movie-going experience, that I'm hoping everyone in here knows what I'm talking about, right? Okay, okay. Casey. So this is also the basis of vocoding? No, vocoding is something different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and you can ring modulate anything that comes in through the microphone, you can ring modulate it. And what's happening is you're literally shifting the spectra of sound by whatever the, the hertz is going into your oscillator. Tony. Uh, 
Okay. 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 So, ring modulation. Let's move from ring modulation to amplitude modulation. Okay. We could, let's see, we could amplitude modulate our voice as well. Okay. What we have to do when we amplitude modulate, the difference between amplitude modulation and ring modulation is one of the type of oscillator, um, the, the, some of the characteristics of the oscillator, not the, not the shape of the oscillator. So it's not, not a difference between sine wave, sawtooth wave, triangle wave, that sort of thing. It's a difference between uh, a unipolar signal and a bipolar signal, okay? So uni, like uni, like unicycle, like unicorn, those sorts of things, unipolar, okay, versus bipolar. So if I take my scope object and I connect it to my cycle object, okay, you see how the... You see how the signal's going above and below the center line? It's doing some crazy stuff there, okay. See how it's going above and below the center line, okay? That's a bipolar signal. It's both positive and negative, bipolar, okay? If you instead take the cycle object and delete it, okay, we're gonna have to use two objects here. We have to first use a phasor object, that's what's going to connect with our frequency. Again, phasor, P-H-A-S-O-R. And then we're going to use a cos object, C-O-S, which generates a cosine function. But you notice that it says cosine function 0 to 1 range. This is a unipolar cosine function. And I kind of glossed past this last Wednesday, the fact that the cycle object, yes, is technically a cosine wave, not a sine wave. but um, a single oscillator, you're not going to hear that phase difference. It's only when you start to combine oscillators that you'll hear the phase differences between them, okay? Like we were doing in that first example. So connect your phaser to your cosine, actually connect it to the scope first just so you can see the difference in a, oh, that, hey, that's not unipolar. I've been fooled. It should be between 0 and 1, and it's not. Let me see here. This is a drawing error. Let me see. Let me open up the help patch on this. Oh wow! Okay, it's great. So they are. They, it's not between. It is still between negative one and one. Crazy. Okay. That's not what we want. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna have to do some math to get this in the in the unipolar range because it needs to be unipolar. So sorry, I should have actually put signal to scope and figured that out myself. Okay, back to the cycle object, or if you want to just do that, we can. Okay, so I need to actually multiply. Let's see, I need to multiply the signal by 0.5 because I need it to be half the range that it is before. And then I need to add tilde 0 0.5. Uh, and now when I put it in there, oh, whoa. Did I do something else wrong? Yeah, it's okay, it's unipolar. There we are. Look at that. That's what I want. Everybody see the difference in that one? It's unipolar. It's only positive. It's only going to be in the 0 to 1 range. That's what I want. Okay. So let me zoom in on the screen here so you guys can see the chain of objects here. I did cycle into a multiply tilde 0 0.5 and then a plus tilde 0 0.5. That will give me a unipolar signal. Okay. Now I want you to Connect that to your microphone again and listen to the difference because the difference should be pretty drastic. No, let's see. Uh, uh, it's not quite as much shifting in the in the spectrum. Okay. We, what happens is we don't get we don't get the negative end of the spectrum, okay? So it is a little different, although it's maybe not as different as I would like for pedagogical reasons, pedagogical purposes. Uh, okay. 
I could do this all day. Okay. But you should be able to have fun with your, your voice there. Now, instead of modulating it by your voice, if you take this out, the easy deck, or the easy A deck, and I'm just going to select. And if you get lost along the way, you may have uh, seen that I've got cheat sheets over here. Inside each one of these, I've actually got a semi-completed patch. Okay, so if you get lost along the way and kind of need to catch up, feel free to do that. Now, copy that over. Put in, okay, so we were modulating the spectra of your voice, right, which is more complex than a sine wave. Yes, we can all agree on that. The, the spectrum of your voice is more complicated than a sine wave, okay. So now we're effectively stepping back and just modulating by a sine wave, okay. So take your sine wave. I'm going to set it, well, I'm going to type in 440 here, and it keeps burping every time I click the mouse there, okay. So I'm going to set it at 440, and you should notice that, actually, I'm going to set it up even. Okay. I want to get it to the point where I can see it there. Okay. Everybody see uh, the graph that I've produced here? And I've done that by setting my, my, my cycle that I just created, I set it to 1.27 kilohertz, and then I'm, mo I'm modulating it by a unipolar sine wave that's at 780, okay? What you're looking at on the graph, this center one is the carrier frequency. That's the 1.27 kilohertz, the carrier frequency, okay? The two peaks on the side are what are known as the side bands. Okay, those side bands are going to be at predictable frequencies. They're going to be at the carrier plus the modulating frequency and the carrier minus the modulating frequency. Okay, so 1,270 minus 670 and 1,270 plus 670. I should have done it the other direction. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, and as I change the frequency on the modulator, See how they get closer when I have a lower frequency and they get farther apart when I have a higher frequency? Okay. Uh, and if I, I, I had to ramp up the frequency on this. If I lower it now, let's see here. Okay, there's 450. Watch what happens now when I increase the frequency of my, modul my modulator. Notice that Eventually it gets down to zero and then they start wrapping back around. See that? Ever see that configuration? 1.2, let's see, 451 minus 1,270 is actually a negative frequency, okay? But this graph and your ears can't hear negative frequencies. It wraps back around as a positive frequency. So this is actually the negative frequency right here. It's just that it's gone past zero and wrapped back around. Okay, this is not, we've talked a little bit about Nyquist and the fact that it, if you go past in terms of super high frequencies over the Nyquist frequency, they fold back around. Same thing happens at zero in the negative end of the spectrum. Okay. Okay, I'm out of time, so I didn't get to frequency modulation. The cool thing about frequency modulation is you don't just get two sidebands; you get infinite sidebands at those regular intervals. So, okay. Uh, I don't know if I'll, uh, I'll, I want to stick with my hardware configuration on Monday, but check out the frequency modulation patch that's kind of pre-made for you. You can uh, look at that and you can copy and paste stuff from the sub patch here. So uh, inside the sub patch here, there's information here that you can copy and paste to get a frequency modulation patch going. Okay, so check that out. Uh, I'm going to have to end my time there. Any questions as you pack up? Yes, please dis, uh, disconnect the microphones and pack them back up into the boxes. Casey. Um, Is that something that's easy to do in Max or is that like a nightmare? No, it's, it's possible to do, yeah. It's very possible to do. It's just uh, a lot of patching. I'd probably have to drop a vocoder patch in your lap rather than build it with you in the course of 50 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, yeah, please uh, put your mic pack your microphones up. 
And I'm going to play with my... Alright. See you guys with some hardware on Friday.